Philippians chapter 4, verse 15, and 19, 15 to 19, just to let us know that sowing and reaping is not one pastoral interpretation of giving and receiving. <laughs> he said, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and what? Receiving. That is concerning sowing and reaping. Because when I was in Thessalonica, you sent unto my necessities once and again, invest into the kingdom. He said, not because I desire a gift, but I desire proof that may abound to your account. Every genuine minister is seeking the good of the minister to continually, continually, sir, continually, continually. But I have all and I abound. I'm full, having received from a part from Jesus the things which were sent from you. An old of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well pleasing to God. Therefore, my God shall supply all your needs. So giving and receiving is what launches us to the realm of financial fortune. That's the anchor of our assets. I call it the master key to a world of financial fortune. If you are not a giver, you are not a candidate for his prosperity. You are not you can fast for 320 days out of 365 days in a year it won't change your story god is no more whatever a man sows not whatever a man prays that shall you reap. you sow to the flesh i don't believe in all those nonsense you live corruption you sow to the spirit you live life everlasting life everlasting there are people here that nobody in your lineage will ever be termed poor Yes. from generation to generation. Yes. It's also important to know that the covenant is superior to every economic climate. Superior. There was famine in Egypt. Famine upon the OR. Money failed in Egypt. Economic crash. Genesis 47 and verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, it went as bad as offering themselves to be sold. You go down there to verse 18 and 19. But not only that, in verse 27, we saw a remarkable difference. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt. The same land. And in the county, they call the country, county or local area of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, in the midst of famine, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. That's the superiority of the covenant over every harsh economic climate. So the harsher the climate, the higher you fly. Because it's are higher than our ways. And it's not than our thoughts. In Psalm 33, verse 18 and 19, the word says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. You know, blessed the man that fear the Lord, that delighted really his commandment. So, doing what God says, what defines the fear of God is not phobia. It's not, hey, God is coming. That's the devil. He shivers when God is coming. The fear of the Lord is in doing his bidding. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him and upon them that hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. You do what God says, you are kept alive. No matter the happiness in the world. Now, Psalm 37 and verse 18 and 19. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their what? Inheritance. Come on now, read with me. And their inheritance shall be forever. Now, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Come on, give the Lord praise. All our covenant fathers in scriptures went through economic challenges triumphantly. There is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be, 
And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So economic challenges are not new. As far back as Genesis, it's not population increase. Some people are funny. They think it's population, right? So let's kill people so we can reduce population. What a wicked heart. What a wicked thought. How many were there in Egypt? What was the population of the entire world? When money failed? Glory to God. God who fed 3 million people in the wilderness without their sowing any seed. Don't play with God. Every human soul is precious to God. Anyone involved in destroying them is destroying his own lineage. Anyone. Every soul carries equal value in the sight of God. The ones on the streets, the one under, under the bridge, the homeless. Everyone. There was farming in the time of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10. And Abraham became very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. Genesis 13 2. There was farming in the days of Isaac. Genesis 26 verse 1. And there was a farming in the land. That's beside the farming that was in the days of Abraham. This is Abraham. This is Isaac's own farming. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And God said, Thou shalt not go into Egypt. Oh. Stay here. And he did. And Isaac sold in that land, verse 12. And received in the same year a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man works great. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. And the Philistines envied him. In spite of the famine, stay on there. Don't move an inch. And get the law of sowing and reaping. Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Can you imagine? <laughs> and verse 26. They saw his greatness was just blowing and blowing. And then Abimelech went to him from Gerah. And Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Pekor, the chief captain of his army. Now, watch what they say. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, saying ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? <laughs> and they said, We saw certainly, Amen, that the Lord was with thee. And we said, This man, if you don't go and make peace with him, his army will overrun us and cast us out of this, out of this land. Let there be now an oath between us, even between us and thee. And let us make a covenant with you. Amen. Verse 27. That thou will do us no hurt. One man. Amen. Amen. A nation. Mm. <laughs> One man. Because he had the chief of army staff. One man. So it's not local government. Local government doesn't have a chief of army staff. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Do us no harm, oh, because we have not told you, as we have done unto thee, nothing but good. And I have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessing of the Lord. We now know we need you for covering. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the midst of famine, nothing can tamper with God's agenda in your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. And then we saw famine again in the, uh, in the time of Jacob. Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one upon another? Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from there, that we may live and not die. So they could import food. He could import food for his family in the time of famine. Now, the family went to another level, chapter 43, verse 1. And the family was sore or grievous in the land. And it came to pass that they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt. 
Their father said unto them, Go again, oh. buy a little, buy us a little food. They had enough to keep going and coming. He said, This time, take double money with you because you have a lot of money. Abraham was a liberal soul. We saw Isaac a liberal soul. You welcome those who hated you and fed them because he drew from Abraham. The Lord said, I know him. He will, he will command these children to walk after his ways. I know him. Jacob was a tither. I'll give you a tenth of everything that I did talk about. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't be slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. Don't be slothful. Take steps after those have obtained the promises. And then you'll be the next one on the line. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Bring you all the tithes to the storehouse that they may be made in my house. And prove me now here, which I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There will be not room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. And they shall not devour, destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your fruit, your vine cast out fruit before time. Say the Lord of hosts. Then shall you return, verse 17, and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between those that serve God and those that serve him. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn like an oven, hardship of a higher order. And all the proud, forget about those nonsense. What is he talking about? And all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. Chapter 4, verse 1. And the day that come shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, your case will be different. Amen. Your case will be different. Amen. So covenant practice is what empowers believers to triumph in hard times. 